I was working with Steve Stout, and Steve and Puff was cool. But, you know, no one knew what I looked like, or no one knew where to find me at. Okay, Patti, okay, Patti. DJ Patricia is leaving the building. <laughs> DJ Patricia is leaving the building. Now, guys, you know I'm always keeping it real with you guys. And so, terrible, terrible. Uh, as a Ryan Malone executive producers in the building as well. Terrible, terrible, terrible false alarm today. Uh... I went to see my brother Khaled, and I'm not gonna lie, I've been in the studio. Um, and being that I've been in the house for the last 11 months, nobody has really, 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 really gotten to see me. I really even been in my house, been in Khaled's house, or my mother's house. And so, I've been in the studio. And all our friends, good friends, people we love, that I haven't seen in person forever, they just been popping up. They know he's there. They know Joe is cooking. He's in the studio making the soundtrack for the Big Big Show. Now, what could you do? They just pop up, six deep, three deep, five deep, this. We got masks, we dapping, we sanitizer, but it's still... Way, 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 way. I, I've seen more people in this last week than I have in the whole entire year. I'm not going to lie. And so I tell Dre and Kua, I said, yo, I'm not going to be able to do this. Like, you know, every night. And they're our friends. They're people we love that miss us and haven't seen us in so long that they're like, fuck it. Joe's in the studio. I'm popping up. Now. Today, for no reason, I'm furniture shopping with the family. I got the wife, I got the daughter. You know, we went to a couple of nice spots, you know, Fendi's, Casa de Fendi's and this and that, you know, looking at the fly shit. And so when I finished that, I said, I'm going to Godfather's house. And if y'all don't know who Godfather is, Godfather's Khaled. You know, he's my daughter's godfather. So when I get there, for some reason, I say, you know what? I know Khaled. No, I've been in the studio. He's crazy paranoid. Let me take the COVID test thing in his house. And, you know, they, they pretty much test everybody, but not really me like that. So I go, I take the test. Mr. Will, who takes the test, So this is a problem, Mr. Joe. What's the problem, Mr. Will? It's crazy. I took 45 tests. It says you positive. So I look at Mr. Will. I'm like, yo, Mr. Will, it got to be a mistake. Something's wrong. It got to be a mistake. So all of a sudden, Khaled comes out. Yo, yo, when Joe comes, test him. Plan. But I turned around. And I said, nah, Khaled, I know you nervous because I've been in the studio. Uh, and I said, let me take the test again. And so I took the test again. The sh it came out positive. And so this is a weird moment. Because now it gets to a point where we're like, and thank God I took the test outside. I never went in his house. I never want nobody. I never want to infect nobody. I never want to make nobody feel like, like I'm going to damage their family. I know because I wouldn't want nobody. The person I love the most in the world, I'd be like, yo, stay outside. Like, I don't want it. I'm in the light, Khaled. I know you was in here. Oh. Uh, and so I said, you know what? I got to go to the real doctor, real hospital, and take the real test 
and see what it is. And I ain't going to lie to you. Mr. Will, beautiful man, he said, I, I, I've done over 100 tests. Nobody ever came out positive. So I think I got it. But I'm not feeling nothing. I'm riding over to the doctor. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I was ready for war. I was ready for war. And so I went over there. Ladies was nice, urgent care. They took care of me. They tested me, my wife, my daughter. And I'm just sitting and I'm just so upset, right? Because what happens is, yeah, I didn't go to my parents' house yesterday, right? So they took the care, the vaccine both. And so I went, that you could tell I tell y'all all my business because y'all in the comments like, what about your parents, right? And so And so I go, I wait for the test and I take both tests, the 15 minute test and the 24 hour test. And for sure, I think I got it. So I'm thinking like, all right, I'm going to have to stay in the house quarantine. Hopefully they don't have it. You know, we got to fight. You know what I'm saying? We, you know, and, and, and that's the bottom line. At the bottom line is when you don't want something and you try to avoid something, but if it's there, we got to fight. I'm not laying down to no shit like this. It's fucking impossible. And sure enough, they say, yo, Mr. Joe, just leave. We'll call you. So they finally called me like an hour later and said, hey, you guys are negative. I said, what? They said, negative. You ain't got nothing. I said, and they're like, I said, that, that, that must be impossible. They're like, no, you ain't got nothing. And I'm like, they're like, well, you want it? I said, no, 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 no. So I told them the scenario. I tested twice at Khaled's house. And they was like, look, we do this test for real. You ain't got it. Um, and to be honest with you, right after you left, somebody tested right after you was positive. So don't worry. You good. And that goes to show that God is great. And I went into, I told God, I said, God, and it could, this could happen again. I prayed, I said, God. I prayed, I said, God. I'm not blaming you for nothing. I'm not mad at you, God. I'm not mad at you, God. You're a powerful God. You're the one and only God. You're a God of miracles. You're a God of strength, God. God, I know you got my back. And whatever happens, if I got it, I still love you, God. I still love you. And I know you got me and my family. And so, and so, you have to practice what you preach. And so every time at the end of this show, I tell you through good times and bad times, never go against God. And thank God I'm negative. Who knows? Who knows what the future is? But all I'm telling you is my experience of what I just went through today. And it was pretty fucking horrible. It was a horrible little hour or two. Uh, and so, God is great. Khaled, I sent Khaled the transcript that says I'm COVID free. Because otherwise I probably could never see him or Assad again. Uh, you know, he's the first person I called. Rich man, these people gossip so much, man. And this T.S. crew, they call me from New York the second I test positive. Tell me how, yo, you all right? Yo, you, I'm like, yo, bro, I just took the test. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only T.J. <laughs> clunk, 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 clunk. 
What's Yo, up, Joe, bro. man? Listen, my brother. Thank you for coming on the show. It took long enough. Not it wasn't cool. your fault. It wasn't your fault. Uh, it ain't your fault we took long enough, but for some reason, it took a minute. Hold on. Let me get my shit right, Clue. What, ha what happened today, man? Nah, today I went to Khaled's house, right? Okay. And, and Khaled be tested. And the shit came back. Um, like I had the theory, the COVID. And so what? I'm trying to fix this shit. Yeah. And so it feel weird, man. Hold up, Clue. Clue. All right. I might have it. Hold up. And so it came back twice in Khaled's house. Wow. Right? And you already know he's paranoid. That's that, that shit was like a cowboy movie. <laughs> you know, he threw wood on the windows real quick. Uh, Motherfuckers was ducking. They was acting like I had the theory. So I went to the doctor, long story short, he took the real test. They gave me a call. They said I'm negative. Thank God. You know, my family's negative. But we had a little scared, Clue. But I was still going to do the interview with you. I would not have stopped. We got we got to work through the, all the all the hard times, man. Yes, Clue. Let me explain something to you. You're one of the most legendary DJs. Uh, forget New York City in the world. You're a pioneer. You're a trendsetter. You started. I believe you started the DJs putting out albums. Is this true? Uh, I I mean, as far as I knew, I think um, I think. Kid Capri and them might have might have been a little before me, a little before. Oh, so me. Capri put out that album where he was rapping and all that. Yeah, I think so. I'm not. Oh, I'm I not always thought it was don't you. Don't quote me on that. I don't know, but you definitely had one of the. You had some successful albums that sold millions definitely. and millions of records. How did you link up with Jay Z? Because you you were signed to Rockefeller, right? How did that deal come apart? Come, yeah. Come. Um. Well. For one, um, Irv Gotti was real good friends with Jay-Z. Mm. So uh, I was in the middle of delivering mixtapes uptown Harlem Music Club one day, and Irv called me, like, yo, where you at? He's like, yo, uh, I was like, yo, man, in Harlem, for Harlem Music Club. He said, yo, stay right there. I have a, I have a guy, this guy, Jay-Z, he wants to meet you. You know what I'm saying? He wants, to, he wants to hand deliver his record to you. I'm like, all right, cool. So they pulled off with me. Oh, so that's how you met Jay-Z? Yeah. So, um... So they pulled up with me, gave me the record, and threw himself, whatever, whatever. So fast forward a little while after that, you know, I had the mixtape thing booming. And then uh, Irv was like, yo, I'm going to bring you to Jay to try to do this deal. I'm like, all right. You know what I'm saying? So we pulled up with Rockefeller. We talked about it a little bit, me, him, and, um, and Dame and shit. And Dame was real adamant about wanting to do the deal. And um, after that, you know, it was up in the air for a little while, here and there. I'm not sure that everyone in Rockefeller was 100% sold on signing, you know, DJ Clue album, whatever, whatever. So Steve Stout was over at Sony at the time, and he offered me a deal. Mm. So just out of courtesy, I had called him and let him know, like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm getting ready to go with Sony, sign this deal. I don't want y'all to think I'm shim-shamming on y'all, you know, I'm being, you know, being foul because I'm a man of my word. That's important. That's important. Very right. important. So... Dame was like, what? Him, Jay, Biggs, Tata all hopped in a car and drove down to Sony on some bullshit. <laughs> Yo, but listen, dude, because the whole time, they taking their time, but the whole time they thinking, we got Clue, Clue's with us. Right, right, right. Somebody who somebody, Steve Stout is offering you the bag, and then they're like, what we Steve, know, they Steve had Stout. you on the chalkboard, whether you knew it or not. Yo, schedule release, DJ yeah, Clue. Yeah, yeah. They just ain't do the deal yet, but right, they right. was in their mind. They was like, it was a done deal. Right. So Steve Stout, like, listen, I don't care what anybody's offering you. I'm giving you fifty thousand dollars more than what anyone else is offering. Whatever the offer is. So, Damon came up there. They was beefing the shit. You know what I'm saying? On, on a little rah rah, whatever, whatever. And I was like, listen, at the end of the day, I'm a man of my word. If y'all want to do the deal, y'all got the first option to do the deal. You know what I'm saying? It's on y'all. I'm a man of my word. 
So they was like, all right, let's do it. You know, we put the paperwork together and, and made it happen. And Clue, let me tell you something. Congrats, but I mean, you got shit off on them albums that nobody, you know, you got that infamous record, you know, Jay-Z and Maya. That's a classic record. Of course. Like, like you had the biggest and the best on your shit. Like, you know, it was almost like Jay-Z was all over your shit. Yeah, like, you rock. Of course. Like, and, and so that, that for you and your brand, that was bigger than any check that Steve could, could give you at the time. Nah, definitely. I mean, you know, I mean, look, man, you know, you've been to my mom's house, man. You know where I came from, man. You know what I'm saying? Started from the bottom. So, you know what I mean? Just to be able to come up and even get an album done, period, was, was a big deal to me. You know what I'm saying? It's huge. Like, and, and, and it's good that you said that. I, the people don't know. I used to come to your mom's house in Queens. Try that on the highway. The cops always pull motherfuckers off. It, oh. it, what's the name of that highway, Clue? <laughs> it's the, Cle the Clearview Expressway. The Clearview. The fucking Queens. Clearview. My wife is a queen. She was like, Clearview. Like, yo, God damn, they stop yeah. motherfuckers all the time on the Clearview. And I used to come over there to get on the tapes. Uh, the way your whole career started was just so organic, you know, from the streets to ground up. And, and you just playing these exclusive records, and and I I don't know if you are more famous for playing the exclusive records or the actual freestyles because then you had the best freestyles too. Uh, it's a, I think it's a I think it's a mixture, a little of both. You know what I'm saying? Like I I used to always like even like let's say with with with, with your label, your first label, I didn't really know no one up there. I just got the address. Went up there, started politicking, and and you know, worked my way around the room. That that's the type of shit I was on. I'm gonna tell you the craziest shit, right? They doing a documentary on mixtapes or something, right? And then, uh, and while they doing it, they explained to me that I, I don't know if it was K Slate. It was somebody who told them that they used to pay the mastering. The, the people who master the albums. So we always wondered, how was our music out before our people got the music on the mixtapes before we even dropped the album? That was the biggest beat. But no, SNS said he used to pay that actually, when we took the album to get mastered, he used to pay those guys, I think 500 or some shit like that. And they would give him the albums before it was even out. That's How, crazy. You didn't use that technique? How nah. did you get your hands on shit? Yo, man, I mean, early on, I used to get plugged in like with certain people that had access to shit and they would just like be like, yo, but you know, I mean, sometimes some of the artists would give it to me. You know what I mean? Like the artist is like, this ain't supposed to be out, but here, do what you gotta do with it. I remember my biggest beef with Clue, man, is if I gave you a song, I be like, yo, Clue, I do not want to be song number 18. <laughs> yo, I got to be in the top three. I remember, and I would listen to you. I'm, at the time, I was scared to fly. So I would go back and forth to Miami uh, four times a week. I would burn these fucking Clue tapes to the ground <laughs> in the fucking car. Like, Clue, Clue, like, I mean... Uh, it was nothing like it, man. And sometimes it was you definitely do... a vibe, bro. It's a vibe. Yeah, sometimes you create something, but you ain't there, right? So, like, like I said um, recently, I said uh, I've always wondered what a Puerto Rican kid. I wish I was there. What a Puerto Rican kid was thinking when he saw Fat Joe for the first time, Flo Joe, with fifty guys around him and gold chains and kicking that hard shit. I wish I was there to see his reaction, right? Hell yeah. And now, and now when we drop music, because we got Instagram and DM, people show you their reactions now. Now you know how they feel. And right, they, right. what their reactions are. Um, did you know that you was changing the culture and that you was that hot that everybody was bumping your shit in every car? Did you know you was as hot as you was? I mean, not for nothing, like, you know what I mean? Like, it was a good feeling. Like, I would go, let's say, 
like I would drive to the city on like a Friday night or something like that, and every car would be bumping. You know, you hit a clue, clue, clue through every car, bro. So, you know, I mean, one, I think one of the most gratifying times is when I flew to LA. I was doing my album promo for uh, I think Professional Two, and I had to change the game remix. And that shit in LA would be on the radio every five minutes. So I'll be I'll be driving whether it was going to Roscoe's wherever I was going to, man, and they'll be bumping a song. That was such a great feeling, man, to know like on a whole other coast, thousands of thousands of miles away that they was bumping my music was like it was really like, you know, like kind of like the I made it moment. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's crazy. I know the feeling because one day one one time I was in LA. And I was shooting a movie with Mac Ten, thinking of more. Shout out to Inglewood and, and and big homie homie Big Mugs, OG Mugs. And one day Pun was in Vegas gambling, but he had a show in L.A. And this is where Pun was double platinum. And just and we they couldn't get him off the tables to come perform. And but I was just I could not believe when I went in there. I was embarrassed that long story short, pun never came. He's kept gambling, ain't show up. Right. But I was like bugging out that Shaquille O'Neal was in there, celebrities, actors, this. You know, we coming from the Bronx. I can't believe we all the way in LA and the shit is ringing off and everybody's there to see pun. So I definitely know the feeling because if people don't understand, it's a six hour flight, it's a three day car drive. It's really far from LA to New York. Of course. So when you finally get there, you're like, oh, shit. They bumping my shit. That's a crazy experience. And they don't really bump East Coast music on, in L.A. like that at all. So they playing your song on the West Coast, I mean, that's a big deal. Yeah, but you had classics. You had, uh, tell me some of your hits that you had off the albums. Um, I mean, the the Jay-Z freestyle off the Who, off the Who Shot Your Beat is, 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 is a major one. That joint, of course, on backstage, you know, the, the the Best of Me remix with Maya and Jay. That was crazy. I mean, I mean, the Fantastic Fours, you know, the one with Pun. You know what I'm saying? That was crazy. You like, know, in the mixtape, I the, the best rhyme I ever heard was Mace, where he was like walking through LA with the blue and red Pele. That oh, yeah, was my yeah. favorite. That's, that Yo, was hard. That was the hardest shit I ever heard. Like, Cool. That, that, that was the hard. I mean, you had some of the best mixtapes in the, the world. Not, the, not, the Nas freestyle off, off the Make the Music Biz beat was hard, too. Oh, man. man. You you got a bunch of classics. What would you say is your top five freestyles on, on Clue uh, Tapes? Man. Definitely that Nas one. Um... Jay, I think Jay got two. He got the Who Shot Your Joint, and he got the one off the uh, off the Benjamins. Mm. Uh, uh, the Locks, Chest to Chest Freestyle, Crazy. And I, I'm trying to think which Fab Freestyle. And it was one Fab. Fab got so many freestyles on there, man. Like, Yeah, yeah. Fab Fab actually, I was going to go to that, but we could, we could use that as he actually came from you. Definitely. And he came from the mixtapes, and that's where he got to start. How did you meet Fab, and how did you do business with him? Because I know he was signed to you, or maybe he still is. I don't know. Yeah, but he still is. He still is. How yeah. did you meet him and and become, you know, and say, yo, this is the next one? Um, we actually had had um, a mutual acquaintance business person. Like, his management at the time, they used to throw parties. So they was mm -hmm. hiring me for parties. And they went to my uh, my partner Skane. I was like, "Yo, we got a kid from Brooklyn. You know, say one." Is that Che? It was was that Che? Yeah, was he yeah, Che on Web. Yeah, Che on che Web. Web. Yeah. Right, right. So, um, mm -hmm. I actually had Nori at the uh, at the radio station freestyling for me that night. He was gonna do a freestyle. So Skane called me. Like, yo, this kid's downstairs. I'm like, Yo, how you gonna tell me this kid's downstairs? You're not even telling me he's on the way. I got Nori here already. I'm like, Yo, fuck it. I'm gonna go downstairs and get him. So I went this, grabbed him and shit. I'm like, Yo. I'm like, yo, I never heard you before, but you rapping next. Just like that. And he's like, where am I? Yeah, so get some bars together, keep it clean, whatever, whatever, boom. Nori gets on the rap, you know what I'm saying? I got, yo, I got my guy. I got my guy Sport right here, he about to rap. Because that was the name he was going by Sport. So he hopped on rap, killed it. 
And I said, yo, I said, yo, I'm feeling how you was rapping on it. I'm like, yo, I'm trying to sign you. Because I had already, you know, been through, you know, DMX and Cameron and, and, and all these cats who, who got on from, you know, saying like. So you had an opportunity. This is a joke for a moment. You had an opportunity to sign Cam and, and DMX? I mean, when Cam got on the mixtape, he wasn't signed yet. You know what I'm saying? But I'm sure if I were to try to work my magic, I could have. You know, I could have probably finessed it and signed yeah. like Cameron, you know what I'm saying, Foxy. You know, I could I could have probably, you know what I'm saying? Who do you think you could have signed? Because me, I think I I know I could have signed Pitbull. I know I could have signed uh, uh, Bryson Tiller. I know I could have signed Rick Ross. You know who You know who I could have signed, Joe? Who? Who you signed? Who? Remy. Remy. So you had met Remy when she was young? I met Remy when she was young, bro. Matter of fact... I, her and Paul Kane auditioned for me the same day. Wow, I didn't know that. You never knew that? That's a joker moment. I never knew that Remy came to rap for you. Word of mother. And, um, and she snuck through the... I never knew that because when we met Remy, she was a little girl. She yeah. was like 16 from the Bronx. And I never knew nobody knew her. Like somebody like Clue or whatever like that. Yeah, but we was, we was supposed to do some freestyles and shit, but the next thing I know, she was Terror Squad. I was, I was happy for her, though. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah, that's, that's dope. That's fire. Word. You yep. said, yo, and uh, ain't it crazy, man, when you look at it, but but look at this. This is going back. Fab's career is probably 20 years already, right? He's definitely 20 years mm -hmm. in the game. Still loyal to you. Still signed to you. Of course. You know that's like impossible, right? Yo, me, me and Fendi was just talking about this, like how, how rare it is to, for one artist to be with one production company for so long, bro. And you need, hold up, let me not skip the subject, but you need to tell Fendi to stop. Fab put up a picture with him yesterday. He had the Jerry Curls with the Michael <laughs> Jackson jacket. Yo, big Fendi, you got to relax. Like, like, all the way. Like, fuck it <laughs> out, man. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I love Fendi. Yo, but listen, so you and Fendi was so, that's impossible. It's yeah. in fucking possible. Yo, man, us over at Desert Storm, we do good business, man. Damn, that's right. You know what I'm saying? And you know, we, I tell we, people we all the out. time, judge them. Judge people by your experience and how you see them work with others and how they, if their crew still with them and they all rocking, those is good people. Nah, definitely. I also, I also, I was trying to sign Fifty before uh, M and Dre signed him. We had, we had, we actually had a meeting the week before, and um, we was working on it. But then uh, Shamani called me like, "Yo, like we getting ready to fly out to meet Dre and M." I'm looking at the phone like, "It's over." Oh no, it's over. It's over. It's so you know, I was, I was talking one time, and we go back to that because that's a big deal. But I was trying to sign this girl one time, right? Spanish girl, incredible. Right? I went and posted on Instagram and was like, yo, look out for the future. Fucking Bruno Mars flies in. Wow. She's the girl says he's going to sign her. So she comes to me and out of respect, she says, I know I'm supposed to rock with you and this and that, but it's Bruno Mars. Yo, bro, your clue, I couldn't even argue with that shit. I looked out. Of, co of like, course not. Good luck. <laughs> but, yeah, crazy, crazy. <laughs> Yo, listen, I'm glad. I'm glad that that you and and Jay Z, man. Cause I remember at one point y'all wasn't really on the same page, and I ran to you in the supermarket right here in Fort Lee, and I was like, "Yo, come on, man." I'm like, "Yo, I'm about to call this guy right now, man. We're gonna we got squash this, man." You remember that? No, I didn't even remember that. Late night, late night, one night. At, uh, at Food Emporium, right there fully. And I the ran one right the in the corner. Room. And I'm like, yo, man, I'm like, y'all need to sit down and talk because y'all wasn't speaking at this time. I'm yeah, like, yeah, I'm I hopped on the yeah. two-way. I sent him a message. And he was like, yeah, let's sit down and talk. And I think after that, fa I, don't, I wasn't there for the meeting, but I think after that, fast forward, y'all sat down and worked it out, man. Yeah, well, we worked it out. You know, I was stupid. It was all my fault. Um, you know, I'm very stubborn. So, you know, even when I had to be for 50, if anybody rock with him, 
I wasn't rocking with him. I lost. You guys, come on, friends. you guys, come on, Jay. You gotta tell the story with you and Jay. Tell the story. No, I can't tell the whole story. But what happened was, unfortunately, um, we went through some shit, and we wasn't cool. And then we got cool, and we made peace. And the next fucking day, the next fucking day, Nas drops the uh the ether. That's what happened? One million percent. Wow, that's crazy. And so, but I had already tell Jay Jay Z, yo, we're gonna make peace. This is a beyond joke a moment. Y'all would have never heard this till I die. But being that me and Cool talking real shit, me and Clue, I'll tell you. So Jay Z is the only man in America in the world ever I went back on my word. Ever in, in life. He's the only person I ever went back on my word. So we made peace, but you know, I knew Nas since he came in the game. Like right. we of was course. family. So he was really, really my man. And so he drops the ether. It just so happens I had dropped my album, Jose, and they had the battle on the radio station. And I was scheduled to go up on the radio station that day anyway. Because remember, you used to put out the album. A week later, you go up there, you celebrate, whatever. So of I course. was in there in the middle of that shit. And... You know, I was taking Nas's side. It, it, it was it, it just was crazy, and then the rest is history. We, me and him made up a couple of times, and it really worked. And then the last straw was the rucker when we had the basketball. I game. was there, and and he didn't talk to me after that. The crazy thing is, he had to beat my team to go play your team, so they beat they beat us the game before. Like, you know what I'm saying? It was Rockefeller versus Desert Storm, whatever, whatever. You know what I mean? It was a good game. But he his team was loaded. You know, Smush Parker, Lamar Odom. Like, his team was loaded. Now, he had a serious team. But, you know, I had the more serious team, if you let me tell it. And, uh, <laughs> and so what happened was, being that we didn't play the game. So what? Oh, so I try to be respectful about everything. I remember I seen Pharrell, like, a week before the game was even going to happen. Pharrell was like, I love how you and Jay are playing basketball. You know, positive. You know, Pharrell's always positive vibes only. Right, right. And, um, and fuck, they went up on the radio because the day the game was supposed to happen, they were there. And we were there. And it was a blackout. I there remember that. 30, 40,000 people in the street. Shout out Raul. There 30, 40,000 people in the street. The game couldn't go on. So now there is no power, no electricity, no nothing in the street. The only thing popping is Funk Master Flex and Hot 97. Bro, Jay-Z, OG Wan, Steve Stout, go to the radio and start talking crazy on the radio. And then they put Shaq on, and Shaq was saying, yo, I'm here. I'm ready to dunk on Fat Joe's team. It was the craziest shit. Oh, ever. nah. Chill, Shaq. And so now, now they got me into that bullshit where I was like, oh, these motherfuckers want to fuck with me. They, Oh, they want war. Right? <laughs> and so I wound up going to the next game that we were supposed to do. Army fatigue down, 50 of us army. Like, we were hey, doing shit. I like that. And so the game ain't happened. And then, I, and you know, I was talking shit, y'all. They didn't come because they ain't come. Yo, they ain't come this, this, that. So I remember going to a Nick game, and I get in the elevator. Jay-Z's on the elevator with me. He ain't say nothing to me. Word. And, yeah, I said to myself, oh, this motherfucker mad about that rucker shit. And then I seen him again, jewelry stores, shit like that. He wasn't talking to me. And it wasn't until... Uh, I sat in the basketball game. OG won none of them. I, I sat next to OG Wan one day. Becca set me up next to OG here in Miami. And we laughed and joked and told jokes, the whole shit, talked the shit. So I guess OG went back to Jay and was like, yo, man, you know, Fat Joe, cool motherfucker. If, if you, and then maybe like a, two weeks later, it was All-Star Weekend in Miami. 
I mean, in New York, that was the cold. Remember, it was stupid cold last oh year? Oh, my God. Forget about it. Yo, that shit was below zero. And so I went to a Jordan party, and Jay-Z just, he just jumped out of a wall and hugged me from behind. I and when I turned that. around, it was Jay, and I hugged him. And then Tata said, you know, you know how that go. Everybody yeah. was like, yo, what's up? And ever since then, we was just cool. And then All The Way Up came out, and then I called him again. Yo, I need you on the remix. Sit in my ear. He said, send it. He sent it right back. And we've been family ever since. I'm, I'm signed to Rock Nation. I'm signed to Rock Nation Management. That's so dope, thank man. God, 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 God is great, man. Things happen for, for a reason. Now, what's, what's up with you and Khaled and your only fans, man? I, yo, wait a minute. This is a Fat Joe interviewing clue. That, I want to know how the basketball game went because I didn't see it. I, no, 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 no. Oh, you really, really want to talk about that? Why you got you guys just line yourselves up? I don't know. You come in, Ebro. I was talking to Ebro. I did a whole interview with Ebro. Positive. Then he told me, "Yo, I came up here because I heard you said that you." And then he made me get into the white van talk. And so I started <laughs> telling him, like, "Yo, yo, Ebro, you know you the was white gonna go van with no white. windows." Yeah, you was gonna go in the white van with no windows, Ebro. Stop fucking playing with me. So now listen. So now. Now you want to talk basketball. Okay. I seen your cheap shot when I was going to play Cali. He scored. You was like, oh, say it ain't so, Joe. Right? <laughs> so, by the way, I beat him. A word? I beat him. Okay. And let me tell you something. The thing with you is I can't play basketball. I can coach basketball. I can't play. But I admit I can't play. But I have seen you play pickup games, celebrity basketball games. For the people who don't know out there, because he started this shit, Clue comes in with the headband, the fucking one arm thing. Like, you are a weekend warrior when it comes to basketball. And first of all, Joe, you. time out. First of all, first, let me stop you right now. First of all, I play basketball more than, more than on the weekends, bro. That's for one. Also, I, I play with dudes who play pro ball. <laughs> this is a your fact. clue, man. Your clue. Yo, so you trying to tell us you're nice? I, listen. You can your ask, clue. Do you listen, think listen, you're nice? I, listen to me. Listen to me. I play with ah! NBA players. I played in the Rucker on both coasts. Oh I played in all kind of tournaments. You're bugging, Joe. I'm telling you now, you're bugging. Let me explain something to you. Listen, here's what we're going to do. Here, here's the challenge. No, you can beat me. I'm not, I'm not, I, I'm not, I, 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 play I, 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 I could beat you with my left hand. That's a fact. That's a lie. That's a lie. Do we but have to, I'm going to give you that. Only listen, listen, do we have to you can't only beat me with your left hand, Clue. I won't let nobody beat me with their left hand. I don't get down like that. I got too much heart, Clue. I got too much heart. You're going to have to work for that shit. But you could beat me in a regular game. But you're not nice, Clue. You're not. I don't how, about how about this? How about this? How about this? How about this? We'll play. We'll play. One on one, and I will only shoot NBA three pointers. Is that cool? Win your clue. Is that cool? Clue, listen, listen, clue. You're better than me, but you're not nice. And somebody got to keep it real with you, you know. Because we got we. The other day I was on the show. I said, you know what, <laughs> yo, yo, what 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 Khaled said. I promise. Oh, I think Khaled wants to smoke with you the three pointers. Listen, listen, listen. No, Khaled wants um, to listen, smoke listen. right on, on, You on and Rock Khaled Nation, is a listen, good listen, one. Listen, on Rock Nation, he don't want it with Hov, man. He don't ah. want it with Hov at all. He better chill. Tell Khaled to chill. Oh, I got money on Khaled from the three-point line. Money. What? I can't wait. I, can't I got wait. money on Khaled from the three-point line. I can't wait. I Yo, can't Clue, wait. listen, man. I People can't wait. People love you, man, and they want to salute you, and it's admirable that you love First of all, Khaled, you Khaled. First of all, you owe me some red and some blue. We the best niggas. You told me, you promised me, you got me. Send those out. That's He got to give you that. Yeah. He got to give you and, that. And me and Carol were the same size sneakers, so he has no Now he got to give you that. There's no question. Two, he got to give you that. Khaled, you don't want no smoke with me on that basketball court. Just chill. No, I'm, I'm putting up the money. I can't wait. Yo, Clue, you not nice, man. I, I don't listen. know why they're not lying to you. I don't know why they... I'm not... Listen, I'm not I got to get fab, skinny... Shout out to Skate. Yo, first of all, first of all you and Jay Williams, you and Jay Williams try to kill me on I don't know who was on live. 
<laughs> on TV. First of all, Jay will play ball with me all the time, and he gets so mad when I shoot these deep ass three pointers in his grill. Pause. Your clue. You he trying to so say you mad. better than Jay will? I'm not saying I'm better than him. Obviously, I'll be busting his ass. Pause. No way. Your I clue. Jay will. It. Don't let Jay will out here. I give Jay will buckets. No, I haven't seen it. Shout out my brother Dion Cole on the check in. That's my brother, beautiful guy. Uh, yo, Clue, so you really think you're nice? I'm not saying I'm nice. I'm saying I'm good. Yo, listen, I used to go to the basketball courts with my people when we played just regular, and they'd be guys who walk in and they walk in like they Jordan. They walk in with the Diddy Bop, the same. That ain't me. Same. No, no, they study the Diddy Bop, the walk. They let the tongue out when they, but they're not nice, Clue. That's all I'm saying. Cool. You legendary. You rich. You have hit records. Number one DJ. Famous mix it. You got it all. You got it all. Right. We just can't give you the You Nice in Basketball Award. All right, so listen. Here, here, here's my thing. When I'm on the court, Joe, and I get the ball, <laughs> you have to run out at me right away. That's what I'm known for. I'm known for my jump shot. If you leave me alone, it's Cash Money Records. Oh, nobody going to leave you alone, man. They can't. You can't. Nobody going to leave you alone. My they jump shot is you. water. NBA three-pointer. Once I, once I take two steps over half court, you got to be in my face. Let me explain something to you. I'm telling you in front of my people because this is the biggest show in the game. When this COVID dies down and it's over, I got my money on Cali. We gonna, we gonna listen. Three point, listen, three point I, I, shot. I, listen, listen. I see your sponsors. We got Pepsi in the background. I know. I know you got Ciroc. We gonna get all these cats to put Pepsi, Ciroc, everybody, huh? Pepsi, Ciroc, everybody. De Leon. We we going there. Bel Air. We gonna get Bel Air on our side. You know what I'm saying? Cali. You know what I'm saying? We gonna Yo, have clue, people. Yo, you you're crazy, bro. Uh, let me ask you a question. Um. Coming out of Queens, give me your favorite five Queens rappers. Man. <sighs> My favorite five Queens rappers. Of course, Nas going to be on the list. That's that's mm. without a doubt. Um, that's the craziest shit. I wasn't even thinking about Nas right now. Like, And I know that's Queens Bridge. Definitely. definitely. I was thinking LL Cool J. But I, I, that's what I was about to say next. LL Cool J. Is definitely inspiration because LL's from around my way. Run DMC, they're from around my way. So when I used to see LL, I'm from Murdoch. Murdoch crosses crosses farmers. So when I used to go on farmers, I used to see LL driving the BMW A50 with the suede roof. You know what I'm saying? So as a little kid, you see that, you like, yo, damn, like that was like. So when you was a kid, you used to see LL. Right. And right. Farmer's riding around with the drop top when he had the, the sweat sweatpants with the leg, the leg up. Bro. Like you got to see that? When when I seen that car, yeah. I was like, nah, I gotta get me some money. I gotta get that. Like that was the motivation. When you seen that in your own hood, like you like, yo, I gotta get me some money. Well, you know, you know, I had a quick, and I don't want to stop your your five from Queens. I had a quick conversation with LL to change my life. You know, he's my idol. So one day, he had me go out to Long Island and we played basketball. His shit was a mansion and all that, right, when I first met him. And I asked him, yo, how you get this? And he said, I do the same thing you do. It's just, I rap for the girls and I, and, and, and I make hits. You rap for the streets and the underground. And that's the shit that lit my light bulb. That one little thing he told me, that I said, "Oh no, we gotta make hits." We got, and then, Boys. and then I, I signed Big Pun right after that. That's why I was on on Pun, like yo, Pun. We ain't just rapping underground, bro. We gotta make hit records for the girls. But it was all gotcha. that one conversation with LL that sparked that in my mind. Nah, definitely, man. LL, LL's a, a legend, man. He gotta go on my list. Like I said, Nas, Run DMC, like they, they're legendary from Queens. They used to see Run DMC, or, or they were already too big for you to see him. Yeah, nah, you know, I I used to run into them like, you know, back in the days, like 
these dudes would be on Jamaica Ave. Like Jamaica Ave was like, you know, that's like in Harlem, that's like 125th Street. So Jamaica Ave was all is was all 125th Street. So you would go on Jamaica Ave and you would see all the, uh, you know, you'd see the Q-tips, you know, travel requests from my neighborhood too. They from Lynch. Oh, so 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 Q-tip and them would be in the street in, in Jamaica yeah. Ave. Yeah, everybody. Uh huh. Yup. That's crazy. So you got Run DMC, you got Nas, you got LL. Run DMC, Nas, LL. We gotta put Tropical Quest on the on the. I list. mean, they're legendary, man. Legendary. They, they beyond legendary. Yeah. And, legendary. and, and quiet as kept. I love Q Tip, but I used to love Fife even more. Oh yeah, Fife. Yeah. Rest, Rest in peace. Dog. Hell yeah. I mean, them two, their their mixture and the music, the production was Crazy. so pristine. Crazy. Like, was so incredible. Uh, I mean, Child Crow Quest started a whole um, religion in hip-hop. A whole, like, you know, we get the Lupe's, we get the Kanye West's from Child Crow Quest. We get the most deaths from Child Crow Quest. I don't give a fuck who says what. That comes from that DNA, from that, from that family tree. Whether they even know each other or not, they started that shit. No, nah, hell yeah, hell yeah. I mean, of course, and of course, I mean, look, we got about 50 on the list. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I've been waiting. Like, we got, I'm, we got, like, we got, we got disrespect got, borderline right now. Nah, nah, ain't, ain't no disrespect. I'm waiting you know for the, fit, with the, like 50 said. It, so you got Ella, man, Queens got some motherfuckers, huh? You got, you got Nas, you got LL, you got Chop Core Quest, you got 50 and Run DMC. And we'll give you two honorable mentions, Nori and Mob D. Of course. Th those are my guys right there. I mean, I used, I used to pick Nori up. Before Nori had a car, I used to pick Nori up to come to freestyle. I used to go to left rack, you know, risk my life in the, in, in the trenches, go pick him up. I didn't even know Mob Deep when I was trying to go to the freestyle. I walked up into Queensbridge Pilots by myself, just just me and my and one, walked, walked into the world. Well, you know, the... Clue, you would go anywhere. You used to come to us in the Bronx. Of course, yeah. I always tell everybody we was the first people to sell clue tapes in the Bronx. Yo, here's an ill story. So, you know, obviously Biggie and them at, at first was mad at me and shit. I didn't really know the temperature. So, you know, Undia's office was in the in the projects in Brooklyn. I had and I needed I needed a junior mafia exclusive. All right, nigga, I'm pulling up. I, I, I asked under them. I walked inside. They had a fucking apartment in the projects was their office. I walked up in there like, yo, like, what's I need? I need me some explosives. I was I was with the shits all the way. No, 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 no. You was in the Bronx with us. You was you was anywhere. You know, anywhere. and you say that because you want me to tell the the Biggie story, my famous Biggie story. You get mad at me. I think you don't like me no more because I told that story. <laughs> hold on, hold on, time out. What, how does I want to hear your, your version of the story? No, I know the story. I, I don't lie, Clue. I want to hear it. I was in Club USA. Okay. I had just said what's up to you. Okay. Biggie walks in. He got a vest on, and he shows me a twenty-two, like okay. a, not even a twenty-two, a Dillinger. Okay. And he said, rest in peace, Biggie. He said, you seen that motherfucker clue in here? <laughs> That's a facts. I believe you. And so I said, nah, I ain't see clue. I mean, I, I, I was in LA and Suge Knight pulled up on me with like 20 trucks and said, you seen T.I.? I just saw T.I. in the <laughs> four seasons. I ain't one of the motherfuckers. I was like, nah, I ain't see T.I. So oh, I'm looking for him. So Biggie pulled up on me, showed me the gun inside the club, and said, yo, you seen that motherfucker Clue? I said, nah, I ain't see him. And then I tried to tell Biggie, yeah, yo, you know you bugging out. Like, you in the club, you the biggest rapper in the world. Like, what the fuck you doing? Nah, crack, he be dead. You know, whatever. You know, at the time, rappers were mad, and we really didn't know that you was the guy breaking the records. You... And all the other DJs, Capri, SNS. Absolutely. Y'all were breaking the hardest. But right, right. Biggie, you do know that Biggie was looking for you. Yeah. Okay. We used to, we, listen, we was, 
we used to roll around the complete wrong way. Like we was ready for war, but you know what I mean? The complete wrong way, which is, which was, I wouldn't recommend to nobody, but I mean, back then it was what it was. We was young knuckleheads, you know what I'm saying? And you was trying to get to where you at now. Yeah. And so, I, mean, I, I, yeah. I, I actually was working, I was working uh, at, at Interscope, at the, no, at RCA at the time. This was my, at RCA, I was working at RCA and shit. And I was working with Steve Stout, and Steven Puff was cool. But, you know, no one knew what I looked like, or no one knew where to find me at. You know what I'm saying? So I had the access to, to Diddy, so I called Diddy's office, like, yo, like, I knew he was look, they were looking for me. You know what I'm saying? But I, was, <laughs> I, was, I wanted to do business, though. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to do business. So I called this office, like, yo, this is clue. He like, yeah. and he was shocked because, you know, Steve Stout's number pops up on his, on his office number pops up on his phone. He was like, yo, like, yo, what's going on, Playboy? Like, you know what I'm saying? You out there running reckless. I'm like, nah, it's not even like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just trying to break records. And that's how we actually became cool. We ended up squashing the shit. You know what I'm saying? Harv Har Har used to be in my neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? Harv and, and Nasheem and they whole squad used to be in my neighborhood. They knew where I lived at. The hitman. Yeah. See? The hitman. Yeah. yeah. Good guys are... Before you leave, explain your relationship with Envy because I, I believe Envy came on here and said you was his best friend. You you the person who inspired him. And how proud are you of Envy when you see a fucking a mansion a mile long and Lamborghinis and 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 uh break that down, that relationship with Envy. Nah, definitely, man. Me and Envy is, is is super, super close. Like, I mean, probably you would have probably realized it from, you know what I mean, just looking from the outside in. But, you know, we talk all the time, you know what I'm saying? We bounce ideas over each other. You know what I'm saying? He asks my opinion on stuff. I ask his opinion on stuff. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Envy has always, for his entire life, he, he lived across the street from me. Literally five houses up on the other side of the street, Envy lived. So he told me Ernesto, Ernesto is the reason he is who he is. He said he's yeah. seen Ernesto selling tapes, making money, and he wanted to be like you. Yeah, I, I, I was coming through the through the block in a different car every week. I had like five cars in my mom's house in the, in the back alley. You know what I'm saying? Benzes, BMWs. I mean, back then, those was big deals. You know what I'm saying? Back then, if you had the GS400 Lexus, you was a big dog. Yeah, it's hard being, it's hard being a drug dealer, hustler, scammer, whatever you want to be. Uh, today is like, cause before you could get a Benz, you'd be straight or a Rolex, you'd be straight. Now motherfuckers is throwing on half a million dollar watches and shit, chandelier. Crazy. Like I don't know how these people are doing it. Like, like it's yeah. another level in the streets for you to look a certain way. It's not like in our time it was at least you worked hard, but it was attainable. But now this shit is crazy. What, what? I was, I was telling people like when I was coming up doing mixtapes. And I used to have to do business on my phone. I need I needed a cell phone at the time. And cell phones weren't the cheapest thing. And like, you know, a call in the daytime was five dollars a minute. Big so money. My, so in prime time when I was selling mixtapes, my cell phone bill would be like twenty five hundred to three thousand dollars a month. But it was cool because I was making money. I didn't care. I was walking around with pockets full of money. Bro, I was I talking care. to I was talking to OG Juan the other day and I was selling them how. I had the first cell phone, me and my brother Tom Montana, the white shit, the big shit. And when they sent us the bill, we ran in the phone company. I can't tell you exactly what we did, but we <laughs> threatened the fuck out the owner. We like, yo, you trying to chirp me? $5,000. Yo, yo, we, we didn't understand that each call was like $100 at the time. The original Crazy. first cell phone, it was like 100 200 And, you know, we was on there like, we the first people with cell phones. Like, Word. and then we, you know, we threatened the man and all that, but thank God no violence and nothing went down. But uh, it, it was crazy. We thought he was jerking us. Yeah, man. It's 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 blessing to be able to be like, all right, cool. All the stuff we've made it through to even to even get here and be here, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? The, the streets were serious back then. Nah, it's too, it's too, it's too, uh, we too blessed, man. God is great. Yo, DJ Clue, thank you so much for coming on here in the big, big Definitely. show. 
God bless you. Continue success, my brother. And don't forget, as soon as this COVID thing, we got this you want that going smoke. On. You're gonna Callie. lose. Callie, I'm You're gonna lose. Me. You want that smoke? Your clue. You are like a, a basketball player that can't rap but want to be a rapper, or a nah, baseball nah, 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 player nah, nah, nah. who wants to sing. You are DJ Clue, I'm, number I'm, one I'm, I'm DJ. You, know, you I'm, I'm cannot about... play ball, Clue. As, as, soon, as soon as I get off this, uh, off this live and finish my radio show, which I'm about to do, I'm going to send you a couple of videos. No, nah, I don't want to. No, no, no. I seen them. They edited it. You acting <laughs> like I ain't, Yo, you acting I, like I, I ain't <laughs> coach you. I coached you in a couple of uh, celebrity games. Yo, Clue, you got to stop. Yo, you yo, you actually hated on me in one game. No, I didn't. You couldn't hit. Man, yo, you was me, missing everything, Clue. Yo, first of all, first of all, me and Kiss was playing together, pause, and I was Kiss, I hit, was Kiss with a couple of assists. Kiss and he was like, yo, it. and he was like, yo, sub clue back in. He's like, yo, what's mad with Joe? Why he ain't you play? I'm like, I don't know, bro. Like, because you missed 10 shots. Bro. No, no way. That's a lie. I no. can't make you shoot 30. Like, yo, yo bro, I'm telling you, man. This sound, listen, yeah. listen. Yo, you this in sound denial. Like Instagram live, but you capping right now, bro. No, I'm not capping. I'm not capping. I tell you, my money's on Cali. They're going to see it. Yo, God bless you, my brother. Stay up, all right? I be safe. Peace love, bro. Thank you so much. DJ Clue, 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 Yo, DJ Clue. Let me tell y'all, I don't lie. I am not lying to you guys. He's DJ Clue. Number one radio show. Smash hit records. I believe. He's the first DJ to sell millions of records. He discovered Fabulous. We would not have Fabulous if it wasn't for him. DJ Envy, another icon in the business. We know him because of DJ Clue. All the legendary takes, everything. The man's a legend, icon. He's rich. He's incredible. He cannot play basketball. He just can't, bro. I'm not going to sit here and lie. <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and lie to the man. The man is not a baller. I put him in the game, he missed like 10 shots. At least Kiss hit like two, three, three-pointers. But this guy? No, sir. But we're all respectfully, how we say in New York, respectfully. Yo, Clue, I know his love. I know after work, he's over there in Chelsea Piers balling all day. He really want to be a ball player. So did Master P. He can't, though. I can't lie to you. We're the man, not the myth. And we almost gone. They try to knock me out the fucking box. They gave me a bogus test. Said I was positive for the bid. They try to... Finish me. Damn, we got to go. Done deal. Otherwise, I won't eat dinner. Don't, I, I love you. It. it is what it is. I thank you. The people love you. You always rip it down. You always come and do your job. 100. One of the greatest of all time since Quasimodo. Dangerous words, but that's a fact. Yo, Ted, number love. I'll talk to you later. 100. You already love know. Love my brother. One. And so Ted Smooth rips it down like he always does. My brother Pretty Lou got the DJ show on next. We went a little bit long, a little bit longer. Uh, shout out to Eddie F. Wow, living legend, Eddie F. Uh, Heavy D and the boys. Uh, put God first. Believe in God. Trust God. In good and bad times, he's always there with you, and he's going to pull you through. Let your darkest moments bring your most clarity. It's the biggest in the game. Peace, y'all.